Well, thank you. And welcome to the 2015 Sydney Chocolate Ball. On behalf of the FSHD Global Board of Directors, our medical research partners and sufferers of FSHD, I would like to thank you all for attending what will be a truly amazing evening. I would also like to thank our sponsors, our volunteers, staff, directors, and of course our scientists for making tonight possible. A special thank you also to Danielle Thompson and Natalie Moss for creating tonight's event. It is these wonderful people, together with all those that donate money, contribute services, that allow this remarkable medical research foundation to exist. Facio scapula humeral muscular dystrophy is a terrible name for a terrible disease. It is one of the most common forms of muscular dystrophy, perhaps the most common form in adults, but it is also a muscular dystrophy that affects children from a very young age. Simply, it is a progressive muscle wasting disease with devastating effects on physical, emotional, social well-being for both the sufferer and their family. It is a disease where a seemingly healthy parent can carry the gene defect and pass it on to their children with disastrous results. Tonight you will hear about FSHD, the disease. You will get an opportunity to understand what it is and to share the pain and emotion it brings to sufferers. You will also hear about our progress towards therapeutic trials. You will hear about this foundation, what we have achieved and the awards we have won. You will also learn about the hope medical research gives to sufferers. Now in 2007, I decided to declare war on, this, on the disease that had attacked me all my life and the FSHD Global Research Foundation was launched. Now at that time, no medical research into FSHD was being undertaken in Australia and very little internationally. Now in 2007, if you had FSHD, there was no cure, no treatments, there was even no consensus on the exercise you should undertake or the vitamins you should use. The disease was poorly diagnosed and there was generally no hope. Now in reality, not much had changed in 2007 from some 25 years earlier when I was di diagnosed in 1982. When I was told there is no cure, don't work too hard, enjoy life, because before the age of 50 you'll be in a wheelchair. In less than eight years since this foundation was established, it has raised over $7 million for medical research into FSHD. $5 million of this has been committed to 30 medical research projects in eight countries. And we are hopeful that a further $2 million will be committed to therapeutic and diagnostic programs before the end of this year. This is an Australian foundation on a world stage, funding the world's best researchers in this field. When we fund international researchers, our strategy is to insist where possible Australian scientists join them in collaboration. Our strategy is also to fund therapeutic trial readiness and to fund diagnostic facilities in Australia that are world's best practice. Our strategy is to ensure that Australians are able to participate in future clinical trials. I'm pleased to say the Sydney-based Foundation is the largest global funder of FSHD medical research behind US government funded organisations, making it the world's largest private funder of FSHD. This has been achieved without any Australian government assistance or funding. This successful Australian model of how to run a, a foundation is now being followed by other international based FSHD organisations. I'm also proud to announce that this foundation this year we're still able to say that 100% of all tax deductible donations ever received by this foundation have or will go towards medical research and education awareness of this disease, 100%. If you wish to know more about where your money goes with this foundation, then I suggest you download a free app called FSHD Finding the Cure. Simply if you download this app, you enter your donation number and you will see the date and amount you have donated to the medical research projects 
and you will see the projects that you've, in, you've actually donated the money into. You can follow the research projects with regular updates that are provided, and you can meet the scientists when they actually come to Australia. It's a live journey that follows your donation, and it's very unique. Now, as you're aware, tonight is the 4th of July, a special day for celebration. If you're from the US, it's a great day to have a party and celebrate. For me, the 4th of July triggers different emotions. Having written a book about my story of living and working with FSHD, titled Still Walking, in 2011, it was the 4th of July some two years ago that I stopped walking. I remember the moment very well because I just returned from Melbourne and was being helped from my car when within what seemed like a millisecond I was lying on my back on a concrete floor in the car park with my left foot back behind my head. As I lay there in extreme pain waiting for an ambulance, I was actually calm. I knew I had taken my last step. And I can remember reflecting on the fact that I always knew that this would happen one day. If not that day, then next week or the month after. And this was what it was like living a life with FSHD. You were always waiting for something to happen. At the hospital, I can remember the radiologist telling my wife I had a shattered femur, and this was the worst break he had ever seen. It was not a great day to remember. You see, living with FSHD, you learn to accept that one day there was some part of your muscular system that stops working. It happens slowly, muscle fibre by muscle fibre. But living with FSHD, you also remember the individual days and moments that you lost the use of a particular function. For example, I can remember very clearly the moment I last swung a golf club and ended up flat on my back. I never swung a golf club after that. Or I can remember the first time I couldn't put my socks on myself and fed hell, hell, head first onto the floor. Each of these memories is with you forever. They happen one at a time and each week or each month brings a new experience. The 4th of July will always remind me of my acceptance that the war for independence from FSHD was entering a new phase. I always refer to the battle with FSHD as a war. After all, it is a disease that is destroying the lives of adults and children who have FSHD, not to mention their parents and families that suffer as well. This year, I attended the funeral of our founding patron, Monica Ellis. Those of you that have attended these functions before will remember Monica, a beautiful person, a beautiful mind and a beautiful heart. Monica was 39. This year I've spoken to sufferers who have contemplated suicide, parents who are distraught at the thought of their, what will happen to their children. I often get emails from people all around the world who can get no comfort at all from their own doctors asking for help and hope about their own future. This is a terrible disease and is a terrible war. But the good news is we're fighting back. After last year's chocolate ball, I met an incredible man, an incredible philanthropist, and now an incredible friend, Bobak Moini. Bobak came to last year's chocolate ball as a guest. I'd never met him. He knew nothing about FSHD. He listened, he went away, he researched me and the foundation. He researched what we have achieved, where our money goes, our corporate governance, and then he donated a million dollars. In June this year, he agreed to launch a program called the Butterfly Effect by, no, by committing another million dollars in matching funding for FSHD medical research. Tonight, <laughs> tonight, if you donate to FSHD Global Research Foundation, Bob Ack will be matching your donation. I'd like to personally publicly thank this wonderful man and his beautiful partner, Rochelle, for what they have helped us achieve this year and what they will help us achieve in the future. 
the true philanthropists. Now, last but not least, I'd actually like to thank Jamie Jury and Luke Mangan for their remarkable efforts year after year to make this chocolate ball the success it has become. They don't need to do this, but they do. And I know Jamie Jury's here tonight, and I know Jamie flew in specifically from overseas for this, this venue tonight to help us. They're remarkable people, and I say thank you to them. And on that note, please enjoy the evening and please make sure that you can, wherever you can, you can help this worthwhile cause. Thank you very much.